The Complete Crew, a group of individuals that have banded together to conquer the Arks. They ascended from the island map, and apart from the outbreak now known as the Pink Eye Pandemic, Scorched Earth proved to be of little challenge. But can they defeat the Broken Ark without killing each other in the process? Shiny's put she was here on the side of your spino, Romeo. I'd kick her out, mate. This is the story of the Complete Crew, and their journey to complete aberration. He wants to play with the tentacles. I'm not tentacles. The crew begins its journey at the Fertile Lake. Our first task is to set up a temporary camp and gather the basics. It's been decided that the best tactics is to establish a base camp, gather a few tames, and when we're strong enough, move on to the borders of the Blue Zone. There, the complete crew can build its main base of operations and be central to all of the resources it will need. After crafting some basic armor and making a few Trank Arrows, the first creature I attempt to knock out is a level 50 Triceratops. Having a Berry Gatherer will make it easier to grab some narcotics and perhaps it will act as a backup when the crew is ready to migrate to its proposed base location. I got it down. Hey guys. The complete crew work together to knock out a second Triceratops and tribe member Vexing Cat also manages to tame a low level Equus which I'm sure will help us in our efforts later on and become a valuable member of the team. And now that the complete crew have got the basics together, we spot a level 90 Paraceratherium. If we can knock it out, it will make a great transport mount. I take the high ground and begin the taming process. Oh, look at his little happy face. Where are you going, Vex? <laughs> Mistakes were made. Tribe mate Vexing Cat's valuable Equus also gets involved in the taming process. Hello, darkness, my old friend. It takes some time, but the tribe managed to work together and knock it out in the water. Oxygen is not going down. I think it's um, nice. enough water. The water nice. is shallow. Hmm. The complete crew is off to a good start. With a couple of trikes and some low level Ravengers, we construct a platform saddle and begin the process of moving to our proposed base location. Moving is an exciting yet stressful transition that most people will go through a couple of times in life. The complete crew must move forward to find security and a place to call home. The creatures that they have tamed individually are weak, and sticking together, they weather the few attacks that we experience along the way. I'm alright. My armor held long enough for me to survive and everybody else murder the hell out of it. <laughs> home. A refuge and a place where love, compassion and patience prevail. And it's also what you make of it. So after clearing out some bad neighbours, the complete crew begins its task to lay down the foundations and make the kind of place that's full of sustenance. A place of innovation. A place of welcome. While each member does its part to gather some basic resources, I help with some basic plumbing from a nearby water supply. From this vantage point, the complete crew will be relatively safe from predators and the construction of our new base begins. With things back at the base starting to take shape, and tribe member Vexing Cat having tamed a half decent Spino, the crew splits off in search of some better tames. That ball will like it even here. Tribe members Zol and Jaybird spot a reasonable level Ravenger out towards the portal zone, and myself and Vexing Cat come to assist. Nice. Between the four of us, it's an easy tame to knock out, and we're starting to assemble a nice pack of tames to choose from. Good job. While waiting for them to wake up, Zol perhaps has a little too much fun with his glow sticks. There's a present coming down right above you. Oh, no, no. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, I'm sorry. You said present. I thought you'd meant something nice, Sol. Not something that stops me from seeing. I love these glow sticks so much. Maybe some crown we, we can tell, Sol. We can tell. Potentially the best tame that we manage to knock out gets hit halfway through taming. We decide to let it wake up and retame it. Jaybird constructs a taming pen around the creature to make sure it doesn't get hit again. And with our work done, myself and Vexing Cat head back to base. Once we have a good selection of Ravengers to choose from, we can combine some stats and begin to breed some half-decent creatures. But it's on the way back to base that the crew has its best stroke of luck yet. We spot perhaps the most difficult creature to find in Aberration, the Alpha Basilisk. 
He drops a fang that's needed as a tribute to enter the Rockwell fight, and everything else we'll need is relatively easy to find. Finding this creature so early on is going to make beating this map in record time much easier. <laughs> Back at base, and <laughs> tribe member Shizella has taken a break from base building to acquire a couple of high-level Spinosauruses that have been skulking up and down the river. Catching and breeding Spinos is essential to survive in aberration. They're impervious to the radiation in the depths, and they're large enough to withstand an assault from a pack of animals without a survivor being dismounted. The trap is a simple 3x3 design and it's constructed close enough to the base for future tames, but it's knocked out with relative ease, and while we wait for it to tame up, tribe member Marley gathers the resources needed to craft a dozen cryopods. With no practical way to get to the obelisks on the surface at the moment, we have to utilize the loot crates that spawn in the cave. As chance would have it, this location has a couple of loot crates that pop up from time to time, so getting some cryopods to get us started with wasn't too much trouble. We tame the remaining Spino, which is a max level. To take on the Alpha Basilisk now would be reckless, so the tribe head back to base to begin breeding. Each member claims their own Spino and Ravenger, and one by one we all have a few more durable mounts. Once mine is fully grown, I go and grab a few levels along the river with it. But now that we have a little bit more power, the tribe goes in for the kill. It has a base health of 30k, and it has a poison attack, so they're no joke this early on, but as a collective, we make short work of it, winning an Alpha Basilisk Fang. And now that each member has an imprinted Spino and a Ravenger, tomorrow we can focus on doing our first cave. But for now, the tribe has nice. earned a rest. Nice. Nice. The crew's up early and the main plan of action today is to complete the railway cave and have each member retrieve an artifact of the depths. The cave is located close to the portal spawn area and a group of ravengers are perfect to negotiate the small shadowy recesses carved into its winding pathways. With nothing too pressing on the cards for the moment, tribe member Romeo sets his eyes on a reasonable level Kakanos. On aberration, in combination with a couple of Ankies, the Kakanos will make the most effective gatherer. We adopt the taming pen that we have set up close to the base, and tribe mate Romeo constructs a catapult to knock it out with. We then move on to entice the creature into the trap. Um, I could run it in if it's. Uh... We have. To... It sounds like it's a fussy eater. Don't be James. Don't panic. It's just part of the master plan. Oh no! By the time I retrieve my items and get back to the Kakanos, it's already knocked out. In such a short space of time, the complete crew has established so much. With the Alpha Basilisk Fang out of the way, another difficult find on Aberration is going to be a high-level Megalosaurus. It's often easier to tame them in a cave, and it's a rare sight to see a high level out in the open. But no sooner do we knock out the Kakanos, than Tribe Mate Jaybird having barely stepped into the blue zone, this happens. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, yeah. Jay. What the hell? I didn't think he could get up that hill, but he did. A 145 Megalosaurus is a huge find early on. And being so close to base, it was an easy tame. Got lights, fireflies hanging on to it. Or maybe it's your light. It could be my light. The time has come for the complete crew to assemble together and tackle the artifact of the depths. Each member has an imprinted Ravenger, and we make our way to the back of the Fertile Zone. The area itself is full of giant relics and structures from an ancient past, and over the years they've run into disrepair. They were originally constructed by Santiago. Its main purpose was to return its original inhabitants to Earth and break free of the artificial prisons that they had found themselves awakening. According to the lore of Ark, he was the first person to weaponize element, and prior to waking up on Aberration played an integral part in the war that eventually poisoned the planet. This is what led to the evacuation of planet Earth and the backup of life that ever was. The entrance is small, but the introduction of cryopods now make it much easier for survivors to bring in creatures. The crew takes its time, picking off the Kakanos that are out of reach. It's always helpful to use arrows against these giant crabs, as bullets will do very little damage. Does anybody have a catapult? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, shots in that gun. Slow pay penetrates the shield. 
The complete crew pushed through slowly, working its way towards the artifact and its main goal. Um, anyone? Well, we need anyone a few, so... Over the next few days, the crew's base starts to take shape, and members who were unable to attend the first cave run come in to repeat it. The tribe gathers both gas pods and blue gems, which we'll all need to enter the red zone in full hazmat attire. It's been decided that the crew as a group will base jump together into the poison depths and the rock drake trench, and each member must be present to have a share in the spoils of our first rock drake hunt. But over the next couple of days before we attempt to do that, the crew's pretty much free to do anything it chooses. Ark isn't meant to be a race and the tribe is way ahead of schedule. The tribe has constructed a crafting area in the centre of the base. And the basic gathering of essential resources is delegated among members and small groups. Not much happens over this time. Zol, myself and Vexing Cat all head out into the blue zone in hopes of taming a good Baryonyx. But we come back with a max level frog instead. The underwater labyrinth cave will benefit from a decent baryonyx if we can find it. But before we can do that, the crew's itching to tame the one creature that allows you to properly explore this map. The Rock Drake. One or two members of the tribe certainly have a fear of height. And for tribe mate Romeo, his nerves are plainly on display for all to see. Maybe? Jesus. Romeo. <laughs> <laughs> Shiny allowed to run around with no pants, and I'm not. Oh, he's shiny, shiny. Oh, you're, 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 you're shiny Spido. I mean, what have you done to this thing? I didn't do anything. I think Edgar disagrees. Well, he wants attention. <laughs> so yeah, run is shift shiny. Is run is shift run for shiny, or is it something else? Is something else. <laughs> Yeah, R is run for shiny. Yeah, R is like run for shiny. Sprint. Can you wow. figure out how to look down, shiny? How to glide down? Yeah. How to look down? <laughs> What's the key bind for your looking down? I reckon D oh, is F4? for down, is it? <laughs> I have no idea where I'm going. I am not leading the way. Okay, yeah. That's nice. Yo, when do I start to dive? You'll see. Don't worry. Hey, Sean, wow. flying well faster. Where do I go? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea where to go from here. Now Start the portal. Start dropping see now, the... Bex. You can see what? the purple water below you. Start dropping. Tribe mate Vexing Cat lands in an awkward position. Yeah, yeah, I see you. I see you down there. Okay. Uh, it's too late. Ah. Uh, you guys are gonna have to carry on without me. You're my brother. <coughs> but the crew sticks together and awaits for her to attempt a second jump. Sorry for my acute fear of heights. Fine. All right, we got a big warm. Happy cuddle, waiting for you down here. We're all here. Okay, I'm over here. The crew regroup into a tight unit. Down in the deadly radioactive caverns, time is against them. This far away from the sanctuary of the base, dying is a huge setback. And both consideration to equipment that we have and our exit strategy needs to remain paramount to our success. Our main objective today is to collect some rock drake eggs. Domesticated, these creatures are unparalleled in mobility and power, and in the aberrant caves, they are highly dangerous. Sticking to large groups, they'll quickly overwhelm a survivor if one of their own is threatened, and should any eggs be tampered with, all rock drakes in a wide radius will descend on the nest to defend it. Wildcard's most recent TLC gave these creatures some love, and they're now breedable, so our goal down here today is to get a couple of good eggs, so the tribe can breed some half-decent mounts for everybody to ride. 
There's another yep. rock break. Oh, yeah. that one above you, Chonk, has respawned as 150. I see it. I can grab it. Oh yeah, wow, that was fast. That was fast. I still got strong picks. Go for it, mate. We can always um, go and hatch these and come back if we re if we need to get yeah. some more. So. Oh yeah, we can come, but it's so much easier to, for everybody to come down the rock break that it, I reckon we should, rather than risk trying to get more, I reckon we should go back. No, I Freed up what we've got and then come down. Wise people. So with each crew member retrieving an egg, and our best starting point as a level 150, we begin the arduous task of climbing out of the element vault. Only one road leads out of this area, and on foot, should a survivor's hazmat suit run out or take damage, all that we have could be lost. So we're back in the green zone now? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm pretty much home, yeah. That was an adventure. That was a fun adventure. Yeah? yeah. I'll, I'll probably take some The journey to the Element Vault has been a huge success, and in its downtime the tribe has constructed a new breeding area above the main base, even taking the chance to utilise the elevator ingrams that rarely get used on other maps. Being more mobile, the crew has also been able to find some blueprints for the Megalosaurus saddle, and mutations are already rolling in. The remaining tributes have also been put to one side, so the last two artefacts are all that's needed in order to enter the Rockwell Arena and progress onto the next map. Before we move on though, the crew also want to tame some Reapers, which with all the time we have to spare should definitely be something we'll attempt. But today is all about the Hidden Grotto and the Artifact of the Shadows. The entrance to this cave is a vertical underwater shaft just wide enough to fit a rock drake through and well obscured from the casual view. To reach the artifact, the crew will both have to traverse some cliff faces and go underwater, all the while being aware of earthquakes that can easily dislodge a survivor and cause them to fall to their doom. The crew has bred some basic baryonics to tackle the cave with, and since everyone has a rock drake now, we all line up in formation and get ready for takeoff. I see you over there. Comes the crabs. Who brought all the crabs? <laughs> I think I think that was Bex. <laughs> what? <laughs> At least you shared. <laughs> wow. Gift that keeps on giving. I don't think that's a gift. Who are you giving it to for? I think, yeah, that's uh, true. Mm. Uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> Hold up. After making our way through the cave's narrow entrances, the crew deploy their Berry Onyx, a reasonably small dinosaur well suited to both land and water expeditions. We take our time to explore the various caverns and secret entrances before opting to take the lower cave dive and retrieve the artifact. I'll just go without the wingsuit. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, James, on my head. <laughs> <laughs> Too late, mate. Too late. Oh, you already did it. Blue <laughs> <He> jumps. <sighs> That's scary. <laughs> Getting over to this side of the cave is easy, but what lies ahead of the complete crew is far more deadly, and precautions must be taken. Sleeping bags are placed down, and the immediate area is cleared of hostile creatures. This next challenge is a hazardous one, even for a large group. Having to negotiate the tight pitches and squeezes, all the while being situationally aware of the electric eels and jellyfish that can easily stun and dismount a player. Tribe mate Romeo, feeling brave, volunteers to go first, and I come in to back him up. Sorry mate, I've probably just stunned you. you did, yeah. <laughs> Sorry dude. Oh, there's, oh no, there's jellies. Jellies, jellies, come here. Yeah, yeah, I'm dead. Oh no. What's that? Oh, me too. Drowned as well. Oh god. Why James? Did you blame me? I'm sorry guys. Uh, I'll go back through the tunnel and come back out on the other side. A slight setback but the tunnel is much clearer now and the crew recover their mounts and regroup to try again. It's advised to bring scuba gear when in this cave and is noted for future reference. With the tunnel now cleared out the complete crew attempt it again. Please note at this moment I told tribe mate Vexing Cat to watch out for the Kakanos yeah. directly yeah. in front of just us. When you come up out of the water just here, just be careful of this Kakanos. Okay. 
got it. I've got a bit of it. And you'll also note that she says, I've got it. Watching this moment again is just as baffling to me as it was at the time it happened. It's the second time today that tribe mate Vexing Cat has brought crabs to the party, and unfortunately, tribe mate Shiny catches them. It has me. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say that. Caught by it. Caught by it. Sorry, that was what I was meant to say. It was caught by the crab. Didn't catch crabs, but uh, we continue. Everybody, all right? That were close. The complete crew persevere and push on to the final cave dive that's separating us from the artifact. Marley and tribe mate Jaybird volunteer to take a look at what lies beyond. Feeling brave, Marley, I am. Yeah. Remember, I'm just here to document what happens with the complete crew. Uh -huh. <laughs> In the end, we make it. With a few light pets perishing along the way, the artifact of the shadows is finally ours, and the hidden grotto is complete. Tomorrow, the complete crew have different plans. I advise waiting a little longer to attempt being impregnated by a Reaper Queen, especially after the crabs incident today. It was, of course, the behaviour of the ladies on our last arc that led to the outbreak of Pink Eye. But I am here, of course, just to advise on the complete crew's journey. And time, of course, is against them. The following morning, I wake up to find that love is in the air. Romeo Zoll and tribe member Jaybird have trapped a level 140 Reaper Queen and I arrive just in time to witness the boys getting Shiny B ready for her first time. Put some meat on your soul. Because Can the Reaper... Take all my stuff? Um, yeah. All the lads and Shiny have gone before me and in spite of my own advice yesterday about the crabs, I take Shiny's sloppy seconds and ignore my own advice. I of course show them all how it's done and have no struggle finding the sweet spot first time. You got it? Yeah, first, first time. <laughs> oh my god, you're the yeah, only one that did it first time. You're getting a bit excited there, Jay, I'm sorry, but you need to put that away, mate. And this thing should have a damage rating on it. Like a shotgun. <laughs> okay, um... Should I head back then, like, we'll, uh... Uh, I would, mate. You, you don't want to miss the miracle of birth. With time running out for more tribe members to get their chance, I decide to head on back to the birthing spa. And so that the newborn benefits from an extra 75 levels, a baby megalosaur and spino is sacrificed. And now the tribe waits for the miracle of childbirth. Swedish bathhouse. <laughs> right. Do I really want to be in here when, when you guys burst? I don't know, I'm <laughs> gonna... Gonna listen in. Oh, right, I see. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go on, you could do it. You could do it. Push. 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 <laughs> I believe in you. <laughs> Don't think about it. Open wide. <laughs> Let out. <laughs> Congratulations. Boy. <laughs> Why are you getting a bit of a belly on you, James? I'm starting to, mate. It's happening a bit low down. Like, you know. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if it's know what's going kind on. Of Wondering where this is actually going to shoot out of. I'm kind of worried. I'm just going to make sure I am take position. Don't do it, Shiny. Don't do what? Don't let it yeah, out. Put some pants on. Good girl. I just keep birth. Okay. You could I use some pants. You'll hurt the baby. I just got up here, alright? I just got up here. Please leave me alone. <laughs> Damn, look how my body landed though when you shot it. You know? it a... Yay, it's a boy. Oh. Congratulations, mate. Yay, it's the boy! <laughs> <laughs> Stop. 30 in uh, melee, I think. Nice. Yeah, just mind the smell in there, mate. <laughs> just, yeah. The miracle of birth brings us to the essence of creation, and tribe member Romeo takes his role of midwife as an opportunity to have an adventure on the way to meeting my baby. His reassuring presence and support during my third trimester turns what many consider a traumatic experience into an empowering one. I am craving ice cream. <laughs> Eating uh, after. Okay, let me. You say so. Who's a baby? It's gonna be magenta. Okay, we're going to jump, 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 we're going to j
Yeah, I guess I better go I mean, in the bathhouse. I just said that you can do it the, that way because it will attack you, but what it can do is... I feel it. It's coming. Oh. <laughs> oh, <push James> <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. It's in the corner. Yeah, try and clean. Clean. Come here. Hey, let's go. Yeah. You're gonna name it. Dunno. Stats has it got. 35. 36 weight. 31 health. 35 oxygen. Oh, wow. Well, not bad. <laughs> Have you got two, or have you just renamed this one's blessing from God? I thought you called it what? violated. <laughs> oh, if Shiny changed his name. You changed the name of my baby. What are you talking about? Oh, dear. It's not. You know, when a child gets to a certain age, they can change their own name. They like being called that. What thing? Totally does feel violated now. Looking at his baby, saying it's inappropriate. Look at what you're wearing, shiny. That's because he broke my. <laughs> Jesus, is that doing the same thing on your screen as it is on mine, mate? Because she's just ragdolled everywhere. Oh, <laughs> she's just going everywhere. Like, is that doing the same thing to you? If I lose my yeah. stuff. <laughs> I told you, I should not be held responsible for it if you change my baby's name. Oh my god, Shiny. Where did you get that? <laughs> Turn. Let's make sure that my stuff has not disappeared. Uh, it should be right here. I like the fact that her head's on the end of that. <laughs> the time has come for the complete crew to tackle the final cave. The elemental vault and the artifact of the stalker. The entire cave is in a radiation zone, and one wrong move could land a survivor in the deadly purple water. The crew head out to the cave via the surface, and each brings their own rock drake. Well suited to tackling this cave with its ability to climb walls and ceilings, and glide between gaps. Heading over the surface to reach the entrance is an easier way for a large tribe to travel together. Once in the cave, the crew stick to a formation and follow each other over the deadly jumps. We reach the artifact relatively quick without complications, but getting out of this cave proves to be the biggest challenge that the tribe has faced yet. You got another uh -oh, uh -oh, uh -oh. Uh, so Oh no! My game crashed. Oh no. Uh, Does anybody have a grapple? That's what I was trying to say, yeah. Don't grapple, grapple her body. And then if she does go offline, she... We can grind her in. Oh, grind her in. I <laughs> got one. I no, got I'm one. not good. Oh, okay, yeah. I oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. What, what happened? Jay. I tried to, um... On your shine, I tried to, I got on her Drake. And then I tried to get off. Uh -huh. And I hit A and E, but it still went to the right. Okay. Uh, but then I had to glide, and then since I glid, uh, you know, I went to, to the other side over there, uh, Megalith Wars grabbed me. No, 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 I'm sorry, Jay. No, I'm fine. I mean, you did. Yeah, I got a, I got a grapple. I don't know why I didn't uh, okay. uh, eject me to the left. I, I, I guess maybe I'll grapple her as well, yeah. <laughs> but I might end up tuckering her off the edge of the side. Actually, I think I got her, uh, Drake. Okay, I'll shoot this <clears> in the head. <laughs> I got a, a spare Drake and stuff like that. Oh, 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 oh. Oh no. oh no, oh no, she's dragged oh, Romeo no. down. I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. Was you grappled to her and she pulled you down as well? Yeah. Oh, that was quality. <laughs> <laughs> Did you manage yeah. to save her? Oh. Uh, she's on the cliff. Yes. You can, you can reel her in now, yeah? Uh, yeah. Oh, Romeo yeah. saved the day, that was brilliant. Uh, oh, that was scary. Uh, I'm <laughs> not gonna lie, that was scary. It's loading mods. Hey, I just see you drag her across the river. <laughs> okay, okay, I got, I got her, I got her. <laughs> that was good. What a shot, Romeo. That's two <laughs> saves. <laughs> two saves. I saved the day, but I got killed. Oh no. You got Isn't killed? Dead? How did you die? I, 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 I lost me, I got arthros and I oh. left me on a suit on my, uh, 
I'm, I'm with Drake. Drake. I had my gun out and I was like, I couldn't see any half throws down that right, Vex. You've got nameless spawning. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Sticky feet. I don't like this cave anymore. Yeah. Change, change your pants after that one. <laughs> you good there, Marley? Yeah, I'm just gonna walk. Nice for the lights, yeah. Good. Ah! Yeah, yeah, jump, 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 jump. Oh, oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Last hurdle. Uh, can I grab me? Oh, we can't get my body because of things on there still. No, 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 no. Oh, what happened? Oh, just jumped. Oh, wow. What, what happened? Jay? That was, that was close. What was that? Um, I thought it was taking damage down there. That's uh, Marley's. Okay, uh, I'm gonna try and see if I can get to it. Nice. Not nice. No, not nice. Oh, wait, you, you were so lucky there. Like. I'll bring yours over. You bounced. Yeah, please do. Were you just jumping out of the deadly poison? Yeah. Or me, uh, or Jay, you go first. You what? Someone get me chest, please. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> Stop, stand still, stand still. Oh, where are you? Oh, hang on, that's Marley. Oh, shit. <laughs> See, all oh, down. <laughs> oh, I was on the wrong player. Oh, oh, oh dear. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> Sorry, mate. <laughs> With everyone's blood pressure running sky high, the crew returns to base to lick its wounds. The last remaining artifact has been recovered, and the crew have everything it needs to take on Rockwell and the last preparations are made for the final fight. The final challenge is now upon us and the complete crew has assembled its army of Megalosaurus to take on the gargantuan monstrosity known as Rockwell. The crew only get one shot at this as we only have the one Alpha Basilisk Fang. Myself and tribe mate Jaybird taking our rock drakes, the rest of the crew are responsible for the orbs, and the heart when Rockwell is vulnerable. Oh, <laughs> product, this guy's one shot. Uh, no pressure. One opportunity. No worries. Put your armor on, everyone. Ow. Yoi. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Twice the health, twice the damage. I think we need to. I think we need to try to get, make sure we get those two near us. Yeah. Done right away, yeah. so they don't smack over here. Yes. Yeah, it's one of the things we we've, we've been doing with the shotguns is try to take the, those out as well. Ah hell. You fine? No, I just broke my first torso armor. I've got a spare if you want one. I, I, got, got, no I got a spare. Oh. Where my Drake is. It's over it's by uh, Marley. Your Mega? Yeah. It's trying to run straight to you. Yeah. I mean, if you're dismounting to do the, the tentacles, wait till they do that first slap. Yeah. I'm gonna say it just broke my first helmet. Oh, don't run into that. Okay. Oh. That was close. <laughs> I, I had a mild panic starting. Brown moment. He's <laughs> like, I, I, I just turned to see. Brown alert, everybody. Brown alert. Uh, to the right. Jeepers. Yep, Jeepers. and to the left. Yeah, I've got one each side. There we go, it's close enough now. And down. And another one from the left as well. Uh, two more coming from the right. Go too far forward under those tentacles. No, I was just trying to tank the hit so the Stego didn't have to. Mm -hmm. uh, Stego's good, it's on half. Oh, my armor, second chest piece just broke. Oh, I am on the Stego. I've got a spare. This spare if you want one white. Back up this creeper jeans. I am on foot. I should be okay as long as I can avoid getting any more of those acid clouds. I am on foot. 
Oh, okay, Reaper. It's behind we, are, we got a Reaper coming in. You might want to clear the the thing if you're on foot still. Okay, I just grabbed one. I'm not even sure who I'm on. You're on yours, Vex. Uh, it's running away. Alright, I'm gonna grab your spare I'll chest. Go, I'll go there. Oh, yeah. I'll split it on you, I think. Oh, thanks. Much appreciated. Alright. Reloading. Okay. Here we are coming in, probably from the right. Hey, we go. Respond, right. yes. GG! Wow. In the end, the complete crew is successful and ascends from aberration on the highest difficulty. And I'd like to say a huge thank you to each one of them. Ark is at his best when in groups and the crew is the greatest team I've ever had the pleasure of being part of. I do apologise for taking almost six months to get round to editing this stuff, with close to 100 hours of footage to go through that I had to condense into less than 40 minutes. It takes a long time but I'll personally look back at this video with fond memories and a sense of achievement and I hope the complete crew feel the same. I'd also like to say a thank you to Manscape, Ridge Wallet and Raid Shadow Legends for continuing to support bigger creators than myself. But at least I have my patrons and your help goes a long way to making all of this possible. So I'm eternally grateful to all of you. I'll leave you with the final cutscene. But until next time, I'm James from Complete Games and I'll see you.